Good morning. Um, it's Monday, September 14th. Um, been a while since I made a video. It's three days ago. I apologize about that, but it was opening week of the NFL. And as usual, my team's got a choke the first week of the season. It was a bad weekend for two of my teams. Florida State, they had a 10 to nothing lead at halftime. Yeah, only to lose 16-13. They only scored three points the rest of the second half. And <laughs> that's why I get really caught up in sports because it's like, you know, your team's ahead head by at least a couple, near a couple touchdowns. You'd think they would have pulled it out. But that's why you play a game for the full, uh, what is it, 60 minutes, as they say. But, uh. Yeah, and then Philadelphia was up 17 to nothing at Washington and Maryland. And ended up choking and never scored another point the rest of the game. So that that one, I'm sorry, that game was on my quarterback. He he threw two two key interceptions that turned the game around and but I'm not here to talk about sports, but in case there are people out there that like talking about NFL, uh just for the record, my two teams choked this weekend, but on to the movies, and here we go, guys. And it's good to be back, by the way. Um, first off the deck here, I have uh, Extent, the first season. See how shiny that is? They put some of them uh, gummy stickers on the back of this, and I don't like it when they do that. I'd rather them just... These aren't a big deal, really, to me, because they're just, you might better just go the whole Monty and the full Monty, as they say, and actually put a cover on this. I mean, because this is, because not only did I get this off here, but right there, somebody you could tell smooshed it, you know, like did something with it at the store and you can't see that really when this is over it either and this is a show i think it might have had two seasons it starred holly holly berry uh, i think there might have been at least a second season they kind of phased her out a little more and i think in the second season it's just i think they knew that the show wasn't going to be you know, for the long haul so uh there's that. Um, this was two th from 2014. And it opens as such. And it has re-entry, extinct, wish you were here, shelter, what, what on earth is wrong, nightmares, more in heaven and earth, incursion, care and feeding, a pack of cards, a, a new world, and before the blood, ascension. And it's a four desk reader, guys. Right there. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just trying to see if there's anything stand out ish here. Uh, no, but it's really, you know, a sweet looking set. Just after a while, you're going to have to watch it that it don't rip apart. It's not something I would continue to pull out. You know, I, I, if anything, you might want to. Get a new disc, you know, like a, a case to put them in, and then you could just leave this on the shelf, and then you, you know, you could put get one of them four disc uh, cases that you can put all them in. So you'd have to worry about bending, this, you know, the case of that and have it rip apart eventually. So far, all the, this video is going to be about shows here. Um, we got. Jennifer Love Hewitt and uh, Ghost Whisperer. This is a complete first season. It has three of the thin case plastic. Almost like you'd almost call them like thin Tupperware cases. That's what they're, you know, the texture of them are like, like a, a Tupperware casing kind of thing. Uh, we all know what Ghost Whisperer is about. It's got a uh, six disc. DVD collection in this uh, set, so it must be like two, two, two. I'm guessing. 
Uh, does have a blooper reel, which would be funny to watch. Uh, it's a 2005, 2006. And there's over 16 hours of content on this uh, first season. We got this for three bucks at uh, Big Lots. So we were trying to find the other sets, but these are the only two that we found. And then next up, more of the same with Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, second season. This too has the three, as I call them, Tupperware like film feel disc. Uh, they're really thin, see through. Uh, this has a crystal ball mind game. It has a Jennifer Love Hewitt speed painting pa speed painting video, and this too is a six six disker. So that too we got for three bucks. Like I said, we tried to get the other ones, but that's all we saw. But at that price, they probably somebody probably needed three, four, or five, and however many they do have. I think it ran for like seven, maybe eight, possibly nine seasons <coughs> on uh, CBS. It was a really successful show. Uh, don't show match that success as far as TV uh, popularity. I mean, she's on the show uh, was a 911, but. I kind of feel like she's spilling in for the lady that didn't want to do the show anymore, really. Really wasn't supposed to be about her. And then uh, I got this at uh, Big Lots as well. Uh, it's called the Gus Gut Buster Comedy Pack. And I mostly got it for one the one movie because I already had the first two. And it's uh, Will Ferrell and Anchorman. And uh, Ben Stiller and Zoolander, and the main one I got it for, Kingpin, with uh, Woody Harrelson, um, Den or Randy Quaid, and I'm not sure what her name is. Let's see, Vanessa Angel. <laughs> Vanessa Angel. She uh, thinks she played in the t uh, TV spinoff of um, what was it? Um, Weird Science. I, I want to say she played in the. She was the girl that uh, people liked in the. Or the two boys, Gary and um, I can't remember the other character, liked her. She's filling in for the Kelly LeBrock role, in uh, Weird Science. Um, Anchorman was from 2004. Zoolander from 2001. And Kingpin was from 1996, so there's a, a little bit of a gap between each of these, more so with Kingpin than the rest. But uh, let's see, I'm trying to see, 130. Doesn't seem like uh, Kingpin would be the longest out of all of these, because it flies by for almost a two-hour movie. And if you stick around for the credits, if you have never watched watched it or on the fence or whatever. You don't even have to like bowling to enjoy this movie, but at the very end, it's funny watching the Amish community uh, doing a conga line <laughs> while, while they're playing the song. But anyway, by uh, Blues Traveler, it's really hilarious. You, you got to see the end, and then you got to see it for Lynn Shay at the end too, because she does some funny things in a mirror, and that's the way the movie ends. But if you stick around, you got to watch that end. You gotta watch right till the end credit, right till you see you see the year when it came out and everything, and then that's the last of it. You gotta stay for that because that's hilarious. And then uh, I'm gonna show you what the discs look like. They're all the same uh, in physical appearance. So there's Zoolander. Yeah, honestly, the Kingpin one's the best-looking one, even though they're all the same. But look at the writing. Yeah, he has a bowling pin. Bowling pin where, pin where the eyes are. Whereas Zoolander's kind of... At least Will Ferrell's Anchorman has a little bit of a... Just looks like they stuck Zoolander on there just to write it down. I mean, I know that's the way the, the writing is, but I think that's the best-looking one, Kingpin. That's a three disker, so I was lucky to get that. Like I said, that was like if you're looking for that at Big Lots or wherever, look.
try to look on the side to where it says Gut Buster Comedy Pack. And then it says it's from Paramount Pictures. And then uh, I got Starship Troopers, Trader of Mars. It's one of them CGI uh, direct-to-video uh, Starship Trooper movies. It stars Casper Van Dien again, Dina Meyer, and DeRay Davis. I don't really see how Dina Meyer was alive in this because I believe she died I want to say in part two she might have even died at the, I think it was part two she died in Dina Meyer Dina Meyer played went on to play in Saw she's uh with the captain or lieutenant in uh uh for the police in the show she's a redhead girl uh she she was kind of younger uh, she plays in this as well. Um, this is a Stage 6 Sony Company release. It's from 2017. It has special features inside the music, inside the performance capture. Johnny Rico is back. I take it Casper and Dean is playing Rico again. Uh-oh. I've never seen it in CGI. I, don't know, I might pop it in someday soon and see what it's like. Speaking of genre stuff, I watched a really good movie on Shudder last night. It's called Fade to, Fade to Black. It's kind of like a throwback version of, of a slasher. Uh, it stars Dennis Christopher from Breaking Away. What it was was he's an obsessed movie fan. Especially the old classics and stuff. But uh, in that movie, it kind of feels a little bit like uh, Willard. Because uh, his character his character in this is picked on by many of the people that he comes in daily contact with. And in this movie had, um, what else did it have in it? That was, can't think of his name. Jeez. I get to these videos and then I can't think of certain actors' names, but it, uh, I can't remember. Let me see. Sorry about the delay. I just, that bothers me if I don't say the name of, uh, Got, it had Tim Thomerson in it as well. Tim Thomerson went on to play in uh, um, Scanner, no, Trancers movies, along with uh, a few other um, Full Moon movies. But that's not who I was thinking of. Oh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke was one of the bad guys in it, too, because he uh, was always picking at the Dennis Christopher character. Um that movie is from 1980, and it was a horror. It's classified as a horror slasher film. Uh, it gets a 45% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it wasn't wasn't my ideal kind of slasher film, but for what it was, it was really good. And um, he got picked on anyway, and uh, his caretaker whatever guardian or whatever he's kind of older so it's kind of weird because he's still living with his he calls her auntie you know like like it's his aunt i don't know if it was her, was his aunt or if it, she was his guardian and she was like an aunt because apparently she took him in for uh because his mother had passed away at, when he was at a young age and he would have went into foster care so she kind of rubs it into him every day that she took him in and oh if it wouldn't have been for me you wouldn't have been anything and you know that kind of thing but uh yeah he's picked on every day and one day he goes over the top when his auntie gets ticked off at him about that he always sits on his bot and he's watching movies and and in other words he is she was sick of seeing him have fun because I didn't see what he was, he did work, he didn't have the greatest of job, but he did work, and he tried his best to get a little bit of an income, it's just, you know, I think he wanted to have a, 
uh, a true job in the film industry. And one day she loses her temper and she knocks this projector over. And it hits, uh, hits the floor. I don't know if she ruins this film or ruins the projector in the process. Because I kind of got that vibe that something happened to the movie film that he was watching. And it set him off. And he remembered a scene from a movie, that a classic that he saw. About a guy taking a lady that was in a wheelchair. And that's what his aunt was. Uh, her wheelchair stopped working. The little joystick thing that worked the um, wheelchair. And she wanted help being pushed. And then he pushed her because he snapped. And he got to the top where I guess it was like a door that was going to the outside. And he walked up behind her and pushed her to the doorway. And continued to shove her down the steps. She fell down the stairs and she died. And after that in the movie, he just started seeing things before he killed people. Like, like he saw this girl he kept having a thing for. Uh, like, a, she looked like a Marilyn Monroe. Although, I thought a lot of ways she looked like the singer Blondie. But, a lot of people probably would say she looked a lot like uh, Marilyn Monroe as well. But, but uh, she was Australian. I don't know. That was kind of the weird part. Is is in America, but she had a Australian accent. I don't know if they hired her because she, you know, fit the part. But it, I don't know if they flew her in or or she just was just came to America or something. And not that that's a big deal, but it's just kind of odd hearing an all American cast and then all of a sudden you hear an Australian actress. You just didn't really see that an awful lot back in the eighties. And um it was a good movie, but uh I just wish it would have been a little bit more like more serious. I mean it was it was serious but it was kinda it was a good throwback to all the old movie classics out there, but I just wish it would have been a little bit more on the demented side, kind of more like a more, uh, not dark, dark level, but like some of the lines wouldn't have been kind of hokey at times, like some of the things, but he, he did a good job portraying a psycho, but I kind of felt for him at the same time because I felt like, you know, people would have been better to him. I don't think that side of him would have come out. So you get a chance if you have sling. Uh, if you have a premium subscription, it says you can watch it on there as well. Uh, I watched it for basically f free on Shutter, because um, once you pay for the eight bucks or whatever—not eight bucks, but five ninety-nine—I think it is—you can watch anything in their library. But I really recommend Shutter if you're a horror fan, because they have a lot of good classics on there. And I'm sorry I got sidetracked with the little bit of a mini review for Fade to Black from 1980, but uh, I kind of wanted to touch on it because I'm, in the future, I'm trying to get my, you know, foot into the, foot in the, you know, footing in there to about doing some more reviewing in the future about certain movies I've watched because it's kind of like my dream to, to do reviews occasionally as well, not just do movie hauls because it gets kind of one-dimensional. But uh, next up here, I got a horror film, uh, the best exorcism film in at least a decade. It's called The Divine Fury. Um, this was a uh, Well Go USA. I did not know that. Hopefully it's English. Okay, it's dubbed English. Okay, that's fine. Not that that's bad, but I didn't want it to be full on. I might watch this tonight. I don't think I've ever watched it. After losing his father at a young age in a terrible accident, young Hu abandons his Christian faith and chooses to only believe in himself. Now as an adult, young Hu is a champion fighter and has everything he has ever wanted. That is until a mysterious wound appears in the palm of his hand and he finds himself in the middle of a dangerous fight against otherworldly evil forces seeking to wreak havoc on the human world. One of the best and most satisfying films of the year. This is from 2019. I have a number of these Wellgo USA Entertainment ones. 
Uh, and then next up, a really fun show here is on the Sci Fi Channel. It says, uh, Season 1 Elphas. I got this for a dollar and a quarter. It's a whole season. It says, uh, Impossible is what they do best. Basically, these people on this team have, uh, certain gifts. Like, uh, Gary here. That's his name, believe it or not. I'm not making it up. Gary. He has, um, I want to say he's, uh, what's that? Kind of like, um, not bipolar, but, um, uh, Oh, he's got a, he's got like, it's the, it's the big one I'm thinking of. It's the one where, you know, you, you can't touch him and I, I can't think of what it's called. Um, and I keep, all I keep thinking is that, that, Dick's, Dick's Lex, ugh, the Lexic or what, it's not that though, it's, uh, oh, I can't think of what it is. I don't know. You know what I mean. It's kind of like you can't touch him, and if you do, he goes off. But he's really good with numbers. Like, he can figure out the outcomes in his head, like, ahead of time to help the team, you know, use their better judgment or whatever the chances of things happening. And he's he's my favorite in the show, and he's really funny as well. Um, this the main guy's the team leader here. He played in... um. We are Marshall. He played in a League of Their Own. Uh, he's played in, I want to say, Independence Day as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find his. Is this David uh, Strathairn? Uh, and Lindsay Wagner, who played... Uh, Bionic Woman. She isn't the character Bionic Woman in this, but Lindsay Wagner, who has been off TV for a while, she's in this. Uh, Summer Glau from uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor, Chron Connor Chronicles, and Brent Sp Spiner from Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, yeah, that's okay. On the back, it says people who they have unique brain anomalies imbue them with their superhuman mental and physical abilities. Five seemingly ordinary citizens must take the law into their own hands while working within the government to investigate a new brand of baffling crime. An action-packed thriller starring an electrifying cast by, led by primetime Emmy Award winner and Academy Award nominee David Strathairn. Um, about this show... Uh, my problem with the show was it started off with a bang, and then they did what all good shows do. They start introducing certain characters later on in sequel or um, their subsequent seasons where, like, it takes the shine off the team. Like, they kind of get moved around, and they're still not all in the show, but they're less interacting with each other, which, I, that's to me, that's what made... The show Scorpion on CBS worked so well is because the team was always together. They didn't try to stick them somewhere, and uh, they tried to get cute with this show. And I think once they did that, the show did, the show kind of fell apart because like you didn't have Gary's one-liners anymore hardly, and it, it started off great. I mean, what could have could have been really good or really what could have been great ended up being kind of all right, but. It kind of fell apart after season three, maybe. It got really bad. I don't know how many seasons it lasted for sure, but uh, let me see. I have to know that, too. Hold on, guys. Okay. Uh well, actually, I thought it lasted three seasons. I Well, that's what it, the problem was. I might have been confusing this with, an, with another show, but season two was nothing. I think that's the problem. Season two was just a, a fall-off-the-shelf kind of thing because it just, it it did not, it had it ended up ending after season two. Uh, but the problem with it was, like I said, they had, the storyline got a little bit more confusing by season two, and I think that turned a lot of people off. 
It did get a good rating by Rotten Tomatoes at 81%. So this show air, began airing in 2011. And then I take it, it must have ended in 2012 or 2012 into 13. I don't know. Depends on how sci-fi did it at the time. I can't remember. Sometimes I had a habit of delaying the other part of the season and then, you know, playing in a part of another year like I did with uh, uh, Haven. You kind of thought that was the end of the season. And, oh, we're going to be back in January to play the remaining six. Or uh, I don't like it when, see, when they do that. It's just play them and get the, you know, if you don't want to have the show on. It's unfortunate it only lasted two seasons on sci-fi. But uh, next up here, got a Clint Eastwood movie. So, and with a movie starring Clint Eastwood and Shirley MacLaine. A Martin Ra Rack in production. Two, two meals for si for sister sister Sarah. I was a little disappointed that it was five bucks, so I thought this should have been like three because of how old it was. Just kind of felt like they were cashing in on it a little bit because it had Clint Eastwood. Not that it ain't worth five bucks, but being the year it was, I would have said five bucks easy or three bucks easy. But uh, this is saying the. Oh, okay. The disc was from the company was made in 2003, but the movie's from 1969. It says the man with no name returns to take on an entire army with two guns and a fistful of dynamite. And there's the old cover art, well, post. Uh, You know, like out in the lobby, lobby art, that would have been for the poster back then. I don't know if you can see that too good. There. Kind of wish I had that cover instead of the one it has. I would have loved that. I like these old throwback posters like that. Those those days are long gone. It stinks. This, this is part of the Universal Western collection. So I'm sure there are other titles, either by Clint. Or oh, other ones like maybe Roy Rogers. I, I don't know. I don't know how many in this Western collection there are. Maybe somebody out there has some more, you know, different ones that are of, around this era. But uh, basically, he plays a high plains drifter who rides into town and single handedly rescues a local nun or Shirley MacLaine from a gang of attackers. Uh, must take place in the Mexican border or somewhere near in, in Mexico or in and around Mexico. Uh, says this uh, movie cemented Clint Eastwood's status as a true cinematic superstar. But uh, I had to have that. I put it back at first. I was like, no, I don't. I don't get much Clint Eastwood at these stores, so I'll just get that. And then, uh, I think I might have got this before. Now, this, we're under the Dollar Tree here, guys. Um, I got Adventures of a Teenage Dragon Slayer, five bonus, five bonus films. It's from Echo Bridge for 2017. Has Dragon Slayer, well, Adventures of a Teenage Dragon Slayer. Gulliver's Travel, Travels, Alice of Wonderland. In Paris, The Curious Adventures of Mr. Wonderbird, and After the Wizard, uh, Gulliver's Travels clocks in at 75 minutes, Alice in Wonderland in Paris at 52, um, Mr. Wonderbird at 64 minutes, and After the Wizard is more full length than the rest at 80 minutes. Uh, a number of these were dove approved as well, uh, but the main one here, Adventures of a Teenage Dragon Slayer. Arthur plays a fantasy card game involving trolls, dragons, and magic potions. Exploring the town, sewers leads him to discover a real troll who alerts him to a very dangerous dragon. Arthur must get both the, both the washed-up game creator, Eric Lutz, and his struggling divorced mom, Leah Thompson, 
on board in order to save the world. And this is 88 minutes. This has been dub approved. Uh, it's rated PG. Uh, try to see. Okay. Tra Gulliver's Travels is not rated. Uh, Wonderland in Paris is rated G. Wonder Mr. Wonderbird is not rated. And After the Wizard is uh, not rated. But like I said, that was dub approved. But this book sounds like it could be a pretty good set. I had to open it because I didn't know if it was more than a one disker, but it turns out it's one disc there. Pretty nice looking art. Especially for Uncle Bridge, because they have some really plain physical disc covers. And then uh I got this. It was the last they had. It was uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. So the Lobster Claws is coming to town and all new to DVD Holiday Special. My problem with this, I, I let it go last time I saw it. And I'm surprised they still had it. And I went back about a month later. Um, my problem with this was it's only 22 minutes. I mean, no, you're no more going to pop this in and it'll be over. <laughs> But uh, you can't really complain. It's Christmas, and I love the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs property. I got the other two movies on DVD. I'd like to upgrade at some point, but I like these movies. My son, my oldest son, he did not like the Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs movies. He thought they were ridiculous. I just thought it was a unique take on animation and stuff. I, I love the first two movies. Uh, this says it's from... 2018. I think this might have been a Cartoon Network special or something. Something like that. Cause, or even a CBS special. Christmas special. But, uh, it's 1 by 78 by 1, 5.1. Widescreen, of course, which is always good because I do not like seeing the black bars on the side. I hate that. <laughs> I don't like that's one of the reasons I don't like watching Spongebob on Nickelodeon. I love the show. I love the character. But it's like you got to get those remastered at some point and you got to get rid of the black bars. I, I have a projector so I'm able to magnify what I'm watching. But every time you magnify it a little more it kind of makes the picture a little bit worse. And I don't, I don't think that should be going on in 2020. I mean Nickelodeon's pulling down a, a bit of coin. And they should be able to, you know, remaster a classic such as Spongebob. I mean, it's one of their main, you know, long one of their longest reigning popular characters. And he deserves the full screen, or the widescreen presentation, you know, the HD, the, you know, it would, I know it's probably costly, but still, I mean, Kids probably wonder why certain shows are like black barred and some aren't, you know. And to me, I don't like the black bar. I, it's one of my problems with the channel Me TV is the shows are so old on there that when you put it on there on the cable on cable channel, it's like this little square inside this whole big black box around, it. and it's like if you're gonna have it that way, at least. Put the MeTV logo here and here. And that up here ain't going to be so much bad. But at least if you're going to do that, fill that screen with something other than black space. You know, I don't like that. I, I, have, I have a projector and that really bothers me. Because it's like I got this 110 inch screen. And it's filling about 60% of it. And the rest is just like lingering. And it's like... Please, I can't, I can't deal with this. I gotta have it blown up, so I'll magnify it till I can barely see the black bars on the side, and that's how I get through watching that kind of stuff. But uh, I miss, I missed this this movie movie right here. I forgot to put with my big lots haul here, but uh, I had to put it in another case because I did not notice it, and I got it at the store, and somehow see that right there. I don't know if you can see it too good. But somehow, I don't see how this could have happened unless somebody set something that was laying like right, and it was heavy. Why you'd set something heavy on DVDs is beyond me. But 
this is a uh, movie star uh, Renee Zellweger. It's case 39, but my wife goes, you want me to take it back? It's, it's still wrapped, and I got it out of the original case, and I said, I don't know if you'd ever get this again, so I got it. So if I ever find another one, this one, I might just display this on as is and just leave it as like a, you know, kind of like, kind of like I did with the tan over there. I know these are no longer, these are disc rotted, but I kept the covers because I thought they were pretty neat and, I, and I've got them setting like this, kind of like a little movie poster. And I have two of them, and I have them set in the side by side. You know, I put them on the shelf. Just, you know, it's better to have something to look at than just you see all the movies, and it's like they all it kind of gets repetitive. So when you look down here, and you see a little poster art. You know, it's pretty neat. But Case Thirty Nine stars, like I said, Renee Zellweger, Ian McShane, and Bradley Cooper. And that has another reason I don't have many Bradley Cooper's movies. And I liked him in Limitless a lot. And I know they did a TV show based on his uh, movie. I, lo I love Limitless. That was a good movie. Uh, some cases should never be opened. What it is, it is, is I believe she's a caseworker for uh, the welfare system. And I think they go to investigate to see if this little boy has been abused or neglected. And... Oh, no, it's a little, not a little boy. It's a little girl. Okay. I think it's a little boy. It says, like I said, it stars Renee Zellweger. It's a terrifying supernatural thriller about a social worker who has been assigned the unusual and disturbing case of Lilith Sullivan, a girl with a strange and mysterious past. When Emily, or Zellweger, opens her home in an attempt to help Lilith, it turns into a deadly nightmare. She may not survive. Um, it says co-starring Bradley Cooper. Case 39 is a heart-stopping chiller with a startling surprise that lead, leads to a shocking and sinister ending. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's obviously something wrong with a girl. And they're saying it, the end's supposed to be a shocking and sinister ending, so... Pretty much, it's pretty much safe, safe to say the girl's evil of some sort, or became evil, become evil at some point in her life, and they're getting to the bottom of it eventually. They don't know about it going in, but I'm sure by the end, I, I've seen this, but I don't want to give too much away on it. It's a pretty, I liked it, it was pretty, pretty cool. You don't see Renee Zellweger in a lot of, you know... Uh, horror films or thrillers and things of that nature but uh I've got this one last one here and it's from uh stars Beth Beth Guth Guthro Greg Perot Ben Davies and Aaron Beth Bethia Bethia or, or Beth Bethia yeah Bethia I believe uh Texas Rain has a bonus downloadable uh Devotional praying for the prodigy, prodigy, prodigal, prodigal visit, and it has a digital copy included inside. I don't know if it'd be even valid anymore, but it's Texas Rain. Dove approved. Arc Entertainment. 103 minutes on this movie. Ex rodeo champ and single mom Casey returns home to help care for her ailing father when she finds out. Her dad's prize-winning horse, Splash, has a chance to compete in the equestrian, equestrian qualifying game she dreams of riding again. Handsome Chase Ebersole, a neighboring horse trainer, agrees to train Casey and Splash, and through the two, and through the two have some differences of opinion. The sparks soon fly as her feelings grow for Chase. A series of accidents cause her to question her faith. I don't think I've ever seen this, but... That wraps up everything I grabbed. I don't know if I should put this list this video with big lots with with some Dollar Tree. Because I, I don't want people to not see that I didn't get some Dollar Tree in there too. But 
Uh, I don't think I ever, I might have got this, but I don't think I ever got it with a slip. And I, you know, I prefer a slip if I can get one, and as long as they're not rough. And I don't really see only slightly rough stuff on the edges. Probably one of the better slips in terms of quality. But uh, that's that, the end of that for this video. And this will, uh, Texas Rain closes out this video. Uh, but I hope you guys like that. Um, I'll be doing another video probably. It'll have to be before Thursday because I'm. I heard about a store, a Dollar Tree opening in the area that uh, has moved all their stock from one store to a brand new store that has more floor space. And my wife called and they said. Oh, we're just sending all our stuff that we get in over to the new store. So I'm going to run down really early on Thursday morning. And I'm going to go check out their DVD and Blu-ray section. And I'm thinking there's going to be some stuff there that I didn't get in other halls. So we're going to go down where, where the store is. And we're going to be there around the time of opening on their grand opening day. And I'm going to do what I can to get in there and get the movies that maybe there will be some ones from the last wave that I didn't get I'm thinking because they told us that the movies the stuff that they got in the original store was all moved over and all their trucks they were getting in after that were going to the other store so there's a good chance we could walk away with some more titles and <clears throat> if there's any movies you're still looking for I can look and see if they have them, and if you want, you can leave them in the comments below. I don't want a huge list or anything, guys, just, you know, like maybe one or two, or, you know, one main one that somebody really wants, you know, I could see if they have that, you know, like multiple copies or something, and, but, uh, thank you for watching, and have a good, uh, start to your week, guys, and, uh, Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on Tuesday or Wednesday. It might be it might be t tomorrow because my wife works at eight thirty. It makes it a little easier for me to shoot. Uh, but um, I think it'll be tomorrow. But I'm not gonna quote that. But uh, have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow or the next day. But more than likely tomorrow, and you all stay safe. And I'll see you in another Gary's Movie Emporium video. Take care. Bye.